A Prophecy of Dragons, an expansion for Time Stories, a fantasy expansion. The only one out there, well, it's the only one that I tried, the, where you do not teleport back in time, but uh, you travel to a parallel universe, which is a f high fantasy universe. As you know from these expansions, not much is said on the back of the box because we need to preserve the secret, we need to preserve all the surprises that are contained in the story. And for this reason, uh, I, I, I don't even know what to say. Well, like I did in my previous review for one of these expansions under the mask in A Prophecy of Dragons, I'm gonna tell you, well, first of all, I liked it. I liked it too. I just like time stories and I think that these expansions are really high quality. So I like the story and I'm gonna try to tell a little bit about why. Uh, I liked it, the kind of fun that I had, trying not to tell you too much about what is it exactly that triggered it so that you still have the joy of discovering the adventure. Pretty much, uh, just to warn you about what's going to be in my in this video, I'm going to tell you about what you learn about the case, about the mystery, in the instructions, in the setup, and pretty much something that you discover as you open the box. Even worse, I'm going to open the box. I open the box, I'm going to show the content. So, if this is too much spoiler for you, just close your eyes, close your ears, or maybe just, you know, stop watching. Why would you do that? And then stay in front of the screen. I don't know, people are strange these days. So, here we go. I'm going to share the contents of the box. Yes, we have two main decks, uh, like we have in other adventures. And you can see the sandwich packs that they used to store the cards after I play the game. So, two decks. One pretty much with the set of instructions, the receptacles, the initial plan, the items and the other one with the main locations. However, mystery! There is also a third deck which is called mystery. Super mega teaser. What is this mystery about? Haha, <laughs> you will not learn about that from me for sure. What you will see as you set up the game, however, is that once you set up, you know, the starting cards, the base, the receptacles, initial plan, the items, um, the deck that, that remains to uh, to explore in the area where you are investigating, that deck is particularly thin, so you know that those mystery cards will be important, otherwise the adventure will be very short. What's in those mystery cards? Mystery! Hence the name. Prophecy of Dragons. So you go back to an alternative timeline where uh, fantasy stuff exists, magic works, uh, elves uh, roam the land, uh, there are hobbits and all those kinds of... Do they call them hobbits? I don't remember, but they're the functional equivalent of hobbits. It's high fantasy. Uh, it's, that's for the tone. It's a strange high fantasy. Um, I don't know, almost reminds me a little bit of, of humorous fantasy, but not exactly. Humorous fantasy is pretty much funny all along. Here you have, I would say, almost like mixed stone, because overall it's fairly serious, fairly standard high fantasy. You take the challenges seriously, we are heroes, etc. etc. And then from time to time you have these surreal moments uh, thematically or in the art that are just not to, uh, to game culture. Uh, towards the end, that's read the final encounter, who knows what that is, there is like a big reference to game culture, which I found absolutely enjoyable, um, not tell you what it is, but it just felt strange because I wanted the, the epic moment at the end that was also oh, so cute, it was just, the, the most meta, one of the most meta moments of the game is towards the end or in the final confrontation. In general, you have references to game culture, I'm talking about board game culture mainly, and also you have references to our contemporary world, uh, social satire type of thing, which was a little strange, again, because it's not entirely humorous uh, fantasy, but it's not entirely high, fi uh, um, high fantasy. It's high fantasy with these nods uh, from time to time. Um, the mystery, well, the king has been, the mind of the king has been taken over and so you need to find, to collect uh, various items, so kind of like quests that will allow you to, to reach the king and start the final confrontation to free the king from the from the mind control or the evil guys that go around messing up all of the all the temporal lines that you as a temporal agent are trying to preserve. You start from a fantasy town, you start from the inn and that's 
you need to do that. I mean, what kind of, you know, self-respecting uh, designer games that are clearly inspired by role-playing games would not start from the end. That is where everything has to start. You start from the end, and you can move around. You can go to the woods. You can go to the markets. You can go to the castle plaza. And you go around, and you're looking for clues and figuring out ways to advance your story and get closer to to the king and the solution of the mystery. Although this is not really much of a mystery, the other uh, expansion that I reviewed in my previous video, Under the Mask, is more of a traditional mystery. This one has much more of an adventure flavor to it. It's not a mystery set in a fantasy world. It is really a sort of like Dungeons and Dragons a fantasy role-playing game inspired uh, expansion for time stories. As such, it's not so much about solving mysteries and putting together clues. It is much more about finding the right artifacts, finding the right magical thing and fighting. There is much more combat than you have, for example, in Under the Mask, as it very well should be. Also, you have a nice range of, of heroes, of receptacles to choose from, with the archetypes of fantasy, the paladin, the wizard, the cleric, the assassin, um, the elf, etc., etc. You have a nice range there. Uh, the art is very nice. The art really brings these characters to life, and so does for all of the locations that are visited and the characters that uh, the player's characters interact with. So you have a nice range of characters uh, with replay value there because you can choose your team. Also, you have you have magic. You have extra mechanics that have to do with magic. Uh, which are very good, they add a little step of complexity, they add a little step of complexity there, um, but also the magic can be a powerful resource because, for example, when you're passing a test and you're using magic and you're removing shields from the difficulty of the test, you do not have to do it strictly left to right. So you can kind of like cheat, it's not cheating really, but you can work in a different way and take care of the dangerous or the danger shields earlier to minimize negative effects. Really cool idea. Um, and, but again, since there is that extra mechanic, uh, and I was playing with a friend that had never played Time Stories and actually is not familiar with modern hobby board gaming, then I looked at this setup for for these two expansions, the ones that I, one of them I wanted to try with that friend, and I decided to go for this one instead of this one, simply because this one is more basic. In fact, this one doesn't add pretty much anything to the basic idea, if not, well, the jumping from receptacle to receptacle, but that's easier, I think, to handle that than magic. Uh, in a sense, again, uh, since so much modern uh, hobby board gaming has to do with fantasy, uh, fantasy adventures, defeat that monster, get that treasure, find access to that area, which I'm not going to tell you which one it is, but probably you're figuring out it's a fantasy adventure, sooner or later you'll end up in that in a certain type of very famous location or very common location. Uh, it feels more classic. In that sense, it also feels a little mm, generic. Again, the art, I've said, the art is more flavorful than the theme. The story is, is interesting, but it really is a classic fantasy quest, which I'm not saying negatively at all. Um, it just, for example, if they played Under the Mask, which has much more of a plot to it, in that sense, the plot felt a little more linear or considerably more linear, a little less shallow, but it is more about the action. It is about fantasy heroes doing crazy stuff, using artifacts, gaining weapons at the marketplace, going through all the steps that you expect in a fantasy adventure game or you expect in a role-playing game. It, fe it felt in that sense uh, much more of a role-playing game than, for example, the, the other expansion under the mask or even the adventure in the basic, in the basic set. If you like fantasy, a prophecy of dragons is a strong fantasy adventure. As I said, I wouldn't say uh, that it's sort of like relying on archetypes and generic, uh, very common ideas is a negative. There's something familiar to it. It is just that actually to see those familiar ideas, that familiar type of plot enacted through the mechanics of time stories, to me, it was enough to refresh it, to make it feel fresh, to rejuvenate the idea and to make the experience feel fresh. 
because the engine, uh, the ludic engine here is one that I had never seen applied to this, to this uh, genre, which is a genre that has been done and overdone, one that I like very much, so I actually probably have more tolerance for repetition of the same than other people will have, but I didn't mind going for like a classic quest, uh, a classic fantasy quest, using the uh, new innovative engine of Time Stories. In general, it's a solid adventure, it's tough, as I said, it's more action-oriented than, than other stories under expansions, but if you like fantasy, if you like action, this is definitely a good, solid expansion. A prophecy of Dragons. Yes, once you, uh, once you played once, uh, maybe there will not be much uh, left for you, so the replay value is low or nil, like for other adventures in the Time Stories a system. However, since there is so much action here and you have so many heroes, maybe there will be a little more joy in replaying the adventure after you have run through it with different characters. Optimization, uh, uh, once you have figured out the main plot, uh, may be more rewarding here than other expansions. Although, again, I think it still overall will be fairly low replay value. But a Prophecy of Dragon, replay value may be low, but play value is pretty high. Definitely a good expansions for time stories.